Bowen, and this is uh, Admin 101, Intro to Administration of Justice. This should be your book. We've already run into some issues. Make sure it's the 12th edition. Uh, we've had some people that haven't had that correct edition, and they're missing some of the important information. So before I go over your assignments, your discussion questions, just a couple of quick uh, housekeeping items. Um, I noticed people are posting their initial discussion question a little past the due date. Remember, the due date is Tuesday at midnight, Pacific Standard Time. It's important that we get that in there because that gives your peers time to respond to it. You guys are doing great with your discussion questions. Some of you could elaborate a little bit more, but for the most part, they're really good. You guys are having really good discussions. Because we're on an online forum, we're not in class where we can debate with each other, we have to be able to have those up early enough where people can get to them. So I know the first couple of weeks, getting things started, but from here on out, uh, starting tomorrow, which is uh, the next deadline for discussion three, I'm not going to take any late work, so let's make sure we get it in on time, print up your syllabi, and look at the due dates. All right, so for discussion question one for this class, we were talking about the two different criminal models, right, the consensus model and the conflict model. The interesting thing about that, and you guys really nailed it, was that the conflict model is what we currently have right now. The consensus model, that's a great ideological thing that we should be moving towards that we want, where everybody's working together for the benefit of the, uh, of the whole of the society. But unfortunately, we kind of have the conflict model right now where everybody's kind of worried about their own thing. We saw this especially during 9-11, uh, where the FBI, the CIA, and the NSA all had one piece of the puzzle, but because they weren't talking, because they were uh, following that conflict model, the terrorists were allowed to uh, you know, bring their attack to fruition. So I'm hoping you guys, being the next level of administrators moving out there in the world, will start moving towards that consensus model, kind of breaking down those barriers. Uh, the second question we had really dealt with criminal statistics, and you guys, again, just nailed that. You nailed why we use and why do we use crime statistics? Well, they can develop hot spots for us. They can tell us where in a certain area in our area that crime is happening and how often, times, dates, things like that. As we're asked to do more with less, as resources are being taken away from us and we have less and less officers on the street, we have to be able to respond. So you guys talked about allocation of resources, which was really good. It also decreases response time so that we can get to an area very quickly. Um, most notably, our quote that we talked about, we can have as much or as little crime as we please depending on what we choose to count as criminal. I thought this was interesting and I wanted to talk about it, especially when we're looking at statistics, because the second question kind of dealt with this too. Can they be skewed? Absolutely. For one, some things aren't even uh, um, aren't reported, especially like rape, uh, sexual trauma. They don't report those uh, as often, so unfortunately we have skewed statistics in that way. Um, if there are several crimes in one arrest, only the most, uh, um, the highest level crime will be reported. So if you have a murder, but there was also a sexual assault, a robbery, and a kidnapping, only the murder is going to be uh, in the uh, UCR. So we're going to miss some of that important stuff. So I think what we were talking about there on the other side of it, let's say we start to really focus on something. We have a new mayor here in Ridgecrest, and he says, we're going to crack down on on uh, the, the selling of methamphetamines. So all of a sudden, we're going to have this spike in our crime statistics, and you're going to look back in 20 years and go, wow, what happened in 2013 that there was all these drugs? Well, there wasn't any more or less than there ever was before. We just focused on it. So with crime statistics and with that idea of we can have as much crime as we want if we label it as a crime. So that's kind of an important thing there. Now, your discussion question coming up is going to ask you to look at the criminological theories. I want you to really focus on the one that you think is the best example of deviant and criminal behavior. You know, there's this long-standing argument in psychology about nature versus nurture. Are you born with a certain predisposition to do criminal activity, or is your environment that creates that? So there's a lot of good theories in there. I want you to really dig into them, and in your words, don't just copy out of the book, in your words, tell me what it means, and then how it's applicable. How does it apply? Why do you think that's the answer? Um, also this week we have our quiz, so you want to be looking out for that. That should be up probably about Thursday. We'll have your quiz ready for you. Um, I gave you the outline, so you should have uh, plenty of, of information there of what you got. So again, if you guys have questions, email me. Um, you can stop by the office, some of you have. So I look forward to seeing you guys and hearing from you guys. And uh, again, you're doing great. Keep up the good work.